Government is claiming that it is confident of accelerated growth and several international agencies see India as a bright spot amidst the adverse impact of COVID-19 and Russia-Ukraine war. This is a positive thing. But high employment, unemployment, increase in the number of poor people, less private investment, decline in public sector investment, and record breaking food inflation in recent times have affected all sections of society. Rupee is falling like never before. Now, in this situation, what corrective measures is the government taking? We have become the fifth largest economy, but at the same time, nearly 18 lakh children in India are severely malnourished. Dropout rate of children in primary school has increased from 1.9% to 3.02%. I am hopeful Honorable Finance Minister will address these issues in her reply. Sir, Several state governments have taken initiative on their own to heal the wounds of the people. Odisha government, under the leadership of Honorable Chief Minister Sri Nabin Patnaikji, has taken many pro-people and pro-development measures. Some of them are as follows. So first, the state is leading in reducing poverty and it has come down from 63% to 29%, while 80 lakh people have climbed out of the poverty line. So second, Odisha is the only state in India to have doubled farmers' income. Third, Odisha is increasing in her steel production by nearly 10 times in the last two decades. Recent make in Odisha conclave has generated investment intents of 10.5 lakh crore with potential for 10.50 lakh direct and indirect employment. Fourth, through Mission Sakti, Government is working tirelessly to empower women to be model entrepreneurs and leaders. Fifth, Sir Odisha is committed to provide a pakka ghar to every household. Odisha is the only state where beneficiaries are getting financial assistance, not only for the construction of the houses, but also for their repairing. Rupees 1, triple 4 crore, crore has been direct, directly credited to the bank account of 31 lakh household beneficiaries under Biju Pakaghar Yojana for repairing of their houses. Sir, when developmental activities of such a large scale are going on, the people of Odisha also expect same support and cooperation from central government in a federal structure. In 2019, Center has promised Odisha in the aftermath of cyclonic storm Fanny for approval of 1.84 lakh houses under the special PMAY Gramin program. So many people had lost their houses in the 14 districts of Odisha, which were affected by the cyclone. People are still waiting for the central assistance. I request the central government to immediately sanction 1.84 lakh special PMAYG houses as promised to Odisha in the aftermath of cyclone storm Fani and also to open hours plus window to incorporate those who were not included in the list of beneficiaries under this scheme. Sir, delay in MGNRGF payment is another issue. Odisha is yet to get its dues of around 1,700 crore from the center. Our Honorable Chief Minister has already written to Honorable Prime Minister to release the fund and also requested to review the provisions for the withdrawal, utilization, and recoupment of budgetary allocation towards state's revolving fund to prevent delay in payment of wages under MGNREG. Odisha government, in order to address the distressed mitigation migration in 20 migration-prone blocks of our four districts, namely Balangir, Bargand, Kalahandi, and Nuapada, has approved a new state sector scheme state support to MGNREGS, wherein it has decided to provide additional 200 days of work over and above the guaranteed 100 days of work mandated under MGNREGS Act 2005. The entire cost towards the payment of wages beyond the guaranteed 100 days of wage employment under MGNREG will be borne by the state government. When the state is being proactive in providing employment opportunities, non-payment of dues by the central government has become an obstacle. Through you, sir, I would like to request the government to take necessary steps as proposed by Honorable Chief Minister. Sir, Odisha has sought 60% of coal sales shared from this center and also wants coal-bearing states to be assigned reasonably lower limits for the renewable power obligation that is RPO. Further, 
renewable energy projects in the coal bearing states should be funded from national clean fund energy uh, national clean energy fund ncef while the rate of royalty on coal has not been revised for more than 4 years the central government has enhanced the clean environment cess on coal odisha's demand should be considered as the same each on is based on merit sir at present gst on kendu leaves has been fixed at 18% Central tax on kendu leaf was earlier zero. Considering the difficulties of the tribal people and the livelihood problems they are facing after GST, I request the central government to place the matter before the GST council and reduce the GST on kendu leaves from 18% to 5%. I also demand that Jagannath International Airport in Puri to be completed, completed in a timely manner and another airport may be considered in Jajpur. keeping in view of the importance of district from industrial religious and tourism perspective that is my constituency also sir for that i urge the government to add direct air routes from bhubneshwar to dehradun and bhubneshwar to shirdi tourists from odisha visit religious pilgrimages in uttarakhand and shirdi and vice versa however due to no direct flight connection between these cities is proving to be costly for the people direct flights would be cost effective and time effective for the people of odisha sir i will raise some issues of my constituency sir jajpur is a fam- is famous for tourism bastam saiber sakta all the tourist destinations are there in my constituency besides the district has a rich legacy so far as buddhism is concerned i demand that these tourist spots to be developed with central assistance and buddhist site be covered under buddhist circuit ministry of railway had announced that it would redevelop railway stations in odisha the ministry had narrowed down 12 stations in odisha namely puri bhadrak barampur katak jajpur keunjhar road khorda road raigada sambalpur baleshwar jharsuguda raurkela and bhubneshwar the ministry had said that modernization and redevelopment would be up to the international standards an mou was also signed between bhubneshwar development authority and east coast railway to construct a modern station building at bhubneshwar at the cost of the state government however no steps have been taken by the ministry of railways to modernize the other 11 stations i request the ministry of railways to put into motion the redevelopment and modernization of other 11 stations as well through you sir i also request the honorable railway minister for urgent action on jaspur dhamra line sir to conclude recently in padmapur odisha honorable railway minister had announced that railway projects are pending because of lack of land and allotment once the land is allotted projects will take off the next day however i have a question here why are the projects for which land has already been allotted still lagging and have not been completed yet aaj on 1st april 2021 railway projects costing rupees 55219 crore for 4643 kilometers length uh, fallen fully or partly in the state of odisha were pending for completion these include 11 new line projects covering a length of 1460 kilometer at a cost of rupees 20346 crore one gc project covering a length of 159 km at a cost of 1455 crore and 25 doubling projects covering a length of 3024 km at a cost of rupees 33418 crore is pending different railway projects in odisha are in incomplete stage i request the central government to look into the matter with this Uh, with these words, I conclude. Thank you. Shri Maluk Nagarji.